Three. Hey everybody, we're here in the Mentor Studio on the Human Connections podcast set. And today with me, another very, very special guest, Mr. Frank Friedlander. Frank, introduce yourself. Hi, Chad. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. Good, good. Thanks Thank for uh, inviting me over. Uh, yes, and a very special day as well. So, how many years have we known each other, Frank? Uh, I think uh, as soon, when you opened up Strictly Tint in Henderson, mm -hmm. and that had to, I don't know, when was that? 20. It was in the Six, 90s. 27 years ago? Yeah, 1996, right. 97. Yeah. So so we've known each other for almost, are we good, Briar? We got a, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> master, cameraman. <laughs> master cameraman. All right. So 26, 27 years at Strictly Tent. And I started Strictly Tent when I got on, uh, after I'd got arrested and got on pretrial. So mm -hmm. I met you immediately after I got in trouble. Yeah. As I started building a company uh, while I was going through the court process or pretrial. Wow. Yep. So uh, now, now since I haven't even thought back that far in a long time, I have to say I was young. How, yeah. how, how did I yeah. meet? What happened? Where did we meet? Oh, you, were, you were a very confident young man. And I remember thinking, uh, actually, I like, I like people mm -hmm. that focus on one thing and you uh, and the name of your company, Strictly Tint. Um, mm. Actually, that was a great name for a company, but not for your company because you're always doing everything else. But I thought at the time, Strictly Tint, this kid is focused. We're going to support him. We're going to help him be successful in that in that little little niche market that you were going after of Strictly Tint. Then I finally realized very very quickly, actually. That, uh, that you, like me, come up with 20 different business ideas a day, and it's a question of squashing that to focus on what you really need to focus on. And you've been a proponent of that for most of the time, and I appreciate that. It's funny, I, I named the company something um, defining and had an objective, but the entire rest of my life is something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually insightful. So maybe that's what I need to do in the future is we need to come up with a name again for exactly what it is that, that we do. That's fun. All right, so I was buying film from you. Now that I was you said a distributor that, of you were Window Film. You were a distributor for right. Matico, right? Right, right. And we focused on residential and commercial work, and mm -hmm. you were doing cars. So I was, I was selling you film, and mm -hmm. whenever anybody called me and wanted to some car work done, I'd ask where they were, and if they were in Henderson, I sent them to you. So we, we uh, provided product for you and provided a couple customers here and there. Right. God, that was awesome. That was a long time ago. And that was just the start of a, uh, it was the beginning and the end of a, a Chad that was previous episodes. The last episodes, they've been a little bit, I wouldn't say heavier, but I've talked to some people, and they've been really great episodes and really getting to know some of the people that have helped me along the way and have been an inspirational in my life. Mm -hmm. And you're here today because you're one of those. And whether, you know, whatever you thought about me back then, whatever you saw, however you were determining, uh, I will say one thing. Since that time, 27 years ago, you have continued to play a role in my life and many different fashions, my life, some of my friends' life. And have always been there as somewhat of a father figure. And, and I appreciate you for that. And I like to say that publicly to the world, to you, and tell you that in those 27 years, I know you have your own children, uh, but the importance that you played by just doing the small things that you would continually do, and they were never large things, but you'd always pick up the phone when I called you. If I had an issue, I had something I needed help with, I needed to walk through something, and people ask, how do you find mentors? Um, I don't know. I don't, you know, what was it that allowed you or enabled you to want to help someone that, 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 you, that you didn't know or? Uh, well, it was you. And that you wanted to help yourself. And, and everybody, I, I think that I 
may have helped or been a part of their lives, they they had to have that prerequisite because there's a lot of people that that um, don't have that commitment and and right. uh, and you you wanted to improve you wanted your business to grow and so well, I, I'm I love it when people reach out and ask and and that's just a wonderful thing and that's what you did and you saw me as your I was not only your distributor but, but you were a mentor I didn't even know what the word was out. back then yeah 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 and you did yeah. and that's actually an excellent response for anybody who's listening about mentoring is the, the you know if you're willing to help yourself I, I would say I do the same thing now it makes sense when you say it that way because when I see someone working hard I have no problem helping them achieve whatever they want to achieve it's those who sit back and and play the victim and decide that the world's against them and and don't try for themselves mm -hmm. or or the the negative attitudes right they're just there's a lot of things that you walk away from that you're done in life and you're like I don't need any of that in my life but when you see those young people that are striving and trying there's almost nothing you won't do to help them you as want long. to help them yeah yeah you had a guest on one of your other guests it was a nice couple and I remember he said something about that you never know what effect you're gonna have on somebody else's life you could do something small and insignificant but if it hits them at the right time like they say when when uh, a lesson is ready to be learned, a teacher shows up, and you might have say something to someone or work with someone for a period of time and, and uh, not know it, but positively impact their life. And even if you change a trajectory a few degrees now, over time, that can make a huge difference in where their life is at. And I really, I really think that's true. And I've, I've seen that happen a couple times in my life. Um, in fact, a, a quick story. I had a, a guy that called me asking if I wanted to buy a, uh, working for the Knights, uh, selling ticket packages. And I'm talking to him over the phone, and, and he said, uh, hang on a second, my boss wants to talk to you. And this other guy gets on the phone, and I'm like, oh, here comes the big sales pitch. And he says, is this Frank Friedlander? And I said, <laughs> yes, it is. He said, well, you probably don't remember me. But when I was a kid, I lived in La Mesa, California, and you lived in the condos where we lived, and you used to gather us all up and take us down to the elementary school three blocks away and play baseball with us. And you taught me the love of the game. I've always loved baseball, and I've always remembered you for that. Chills. I didn't even remember the body. kid, to be honest with you. Right. But it was a wonderful thing. And I remember, you know, vaguely, yeah, I used to gather the kids up and go play baseball on a Saturday yeah. in the in the school but so that uh, I did have a positive effect more than I knew which is really cool and you weren't even really trying you were just being you there was another kid in the <laughs> complex that his mom asked me if I would play catch with him and right. that's how it started then we had other kids then we were going down to the park and playing baseball and that's an awesome story and thank you for sharing that because I would say that's still you today even just years ago I remember you're come on Chad let's go play frisbee golf let's go play soccer let's go you are so active I don't even know at the ripe age of like 40 whatever you are I'm pretty sure it's like 40 um, it, you are more active than most 30 year olds I know and how do you do that and what I, two questions how do you do that and then secondly I think that plays a, a part in how you were able to help so many people and how you have, not even realizing it, because you're intentional and your actions and your, your activity is off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned 63. Stop it. Yeah. You're yeah. going for AARP soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting my discounts where I can. You <laughs> betcha. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, you were also always very active. I'm and playing in a disc golf tournament tomorrow. Right. Yeah, and then Sundays, I've been playing on an old man Sunday soccer game in Las Vegas with the same guys for 28 years, every Sunday. You are consistent. And I'll be there on Sunday again. You are consistent, <laughs> Frank. I would ass I, I'm assuming you never smoked cigarettes or were a heavy drug addict or drinker when you were young because your body stayed in shape in your mind, huh? <laughs> I feel like it's hurting uh. me these days. Uh, well, I, I would say I live a fairly clean life, and yeah. I enjoy eating healthy and, and being healthy. 
Yeah. Uh, and if I have a vice, it's uh, coffee and cannabis. Right. Those are, right. That's my thing. And As it, you know. And they legalized it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, was so, it was something that I could never get into. Maybe that's why I never got into frisbee golf with you. I just, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't catch on for me. It, it was weird. But it didn't change the fact that you were always there for me regardless. And listen, I do apologize. Uh, you invited me places so many times, if, I, if I'm really thinking about it. And there was probably a ton of times that I was just too busy to show up. But you came for my birthday party. I did come for your birthday party. <laughs> I, well, and I appreciate I've, that. I've turned over a new leaf these last few months. <laughs> and, and, um, and that's important, is showing up for your people. I've been spending more time with my daughters. I've been doing exactly what I set out to do, which is important. And yes, speaking of gotta daughters. you got to stay in touch with people. Uh, yeah, I wasn't good at it. I wasn't good at it. Mm. So as much as I was doing, uh, I, I say to everybody all the time, one of my, my best friends, Vinny, um, which you know Vinny. Vinny actually worked for you. so you know I that. love Vinny. Uh, I always told Vinny, you are a better friend than I will ever be to anybody. And that's uh, like so true. Mm. Even to this day, he's quite pissing me off. But even to this day, he's still a better friend than I could ever hope to be. And I don't know what that is, that people have that uh, hmm. intuitively, that they just... They know how to connect. And it wasn't that I didn't want to be or didn't care. I was just too busy trying to take over the world. I, guess. I don't know what I was doing. I, I hear you. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did. I, I, I have a little, uh, 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 well, I, I have some files on my desktop. So one of the files is that I, I open up on a regular basis. And I have listed people that I want to touch base with at least once a week and that's a small list of okay. 10 people and then I have a bigger list of people that I want to touch base with once a month and then I have another list of people that I want to get in touch with once a quarter and and people make that list and I and I put them in there and I change it around from time to time if somebody new comes into my life or if somebody drops off um, or drops off the once a week list into the once a month list, but it 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 really has reminded me that yes, this is incredibly important. It's never urgent, so I never used to do it, but now it's on my desktop. So I I click on it and I make my phone calls, and I you have to make a concerted effort to do that, and that's what I never used to do. And people, wow. great people, would fall by the wayside because. I wasn't involved with them today or this month, right. you know, things like that. But that, having that list really helps me. I like that. I like it to a point where I look at it two ways. One, the first thing I thought was, do you have to organize, do you, you, have, you have to organize the people you want to get in touch with. My wife always says it to me. She goes, I'm tired, of, you know, I'm tired of being second on your list. Every time you get a phone call, every time you're doing something, you got work, you're busy, right? And, and I come in second. And I had to learn how to overcome that. But when you put that, that list of people down, you're setting your intentions on what you wanted to do. And in the world that we live today, where you're in touch with so many people, you almost have to do that. And it's a phone call. Right. Whenever possible, it's a phone call. If I can't get a hold of somebody, I'll send them a quick email. Hey, just thinking about you. But that list is to call them to have that human interaction. Right. How many, how many contacts are in your phone? Oh, I don't know. 6,000? Probably. You've been, doing this, you've, been, you've been working in this town for a long time. I, I decided, actually, I, <laughs> I took a cue from you, and I do have an assistant now. And we're going through that list and culling some of them because if it doesn't say 702 in front of their number, because in the old days you didn't have to put 702 down, right. those people, I, those are the ones I'm going after say, wait a minute, maybe I don't need, I either need to reconnect or get them out of my phone. Right. <laughs> no, that, make, that makes sense. You're not wrong. I, I was going through, I started a new business well, I, of course you did. I, I didn't really <laughs> I, I, I'm pivoting. The economy is making us pivot, so I'm pivoting some businesses. But I was going through Facebook to add people to like the page, right? So go through my contacts to have people like the page. And in going through it, I was going through all the people, and then I was choosing who I would send it to, who I thought might be supportive of it, who would like it. That was a, a intriguing exercise. 
right? Yeah. And then also how many people you haven't seen in forever and how much guilt came running over me about, oh my gosh, I have met thousands of people in this town over the years. I think I, I have four or 5,000 contacts in my phone between the businesses. I, and it's hard to keep up with 10 of them, Frank. 15 of them, 20 of them. And then so the guilt started setting in last night and I went, man, I really have to get better at this, right? And so I'm gonna take exactly what you said and I think I'm gonna put that to work. I also have to do that because I don't do a lot of Facebook. So a lot yeah. of people keep in touch that way. And, and that's a great way to do it too, but I'm just not, yeah. not big on it. Listen, social media is hard. At this point, I think I manage around 220 channels of social media. So when I tell you just logging in to the channels, the sales channels or social channels, uh, I could spend eight hours a day just checking everything. So you have to find automations for everything. And social is not a, not a great way to keep up. Social seems or seems to be a great way lately to put your stuff out there so that people could catch up with you if you felt as though it was something important or it would be beneficial for people to understand about your life. That's always a hard one is, do I post this? Do I not post this? I'm having dinner with my family. It's really important that I'm here having dinner with my family, not necessarily showing the world that I'm having dinner with my family. Mm -hmm. So you always got to pick and choose. I always pick and choose what I post because there's just some things that aren't, aren't important to post. I, I did post something <laughs> just the other day. It's my usual. Uh, I took a picture of a flower <laughs> and I posted it. It was a, mm. uh, we have a Joshua tree in our front yard and it's flowering. And the flower is a foot wide and I two foot it. tall. And I'm like, oh, I was just, I was just in awe of it myself and thought this is something I could share. And, and those are authentic. Those come across authentic. When I saw the post, I thought Frank's enjoying himself, right? I went, it had nothing to do with your businesses, right? Because we use social for business and marketing and had nothing to do with your business. And people engage with that. Mm -hmm. they, they like to see that. So something that you enjoyed, other people have enjoyment watching you enjoy. Share the love. Share the love. Yeah. Absolutely. It's got to be fun. That's one thing I have noticed for myself is that uh, I'm, uh, some people are motivated by money. Some people are motivated by fame. Apparently, I'm motivated by fun. So if it's not fun, I'm probably not interested. Yeah, we need to make sure we do a Mentor Fun Award, Britt, and make sure Frank gets, Frank gets the Mentor Fun Award, because I would agree with that. You're the most active and outgoing. So how, being here on, on the Mentor Podcast set, and you have a family. Oh, an indeed amazing, I do. An amazing family, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I think what's funny is I didn't watch your wife engage with your business or what you were doing necessarily till later on. At least I didn't. No, she didn't. She came into it. Later on. Yeah. She's more driven than you are, Frank. When I watch her now, she works. She's dedicated. Would that be a correct statement? Like, she's focused. Yes. I, I went, man. Lily she's focused like, on right. getting us to retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm in the day-to-day -day trenches. She's, right. she's thinking, hey, we're going to start stepping away, letting the kids take over. And fortunately enough, they both want to. So right. we got a shot. And it doesn't happen too often where, where parents can turn their business over to the kids and it can continue and grow and be even better. But in this case, it's, it's all working out that way. Yeah, and that's the one thing I, I truly admire about you and, and the life you've built is I watched you between the move to Temecula and back and things happen. And then I watched you at some point, you decided on, on intention and purpose and what you wanted to do. And when you hunkered down on that, right, you made a few moves to try and find that, at least my opinion of the situation. Mm -hmm. She made a few moves that you weren't sure of to try and figure out exactly what it was. And then you found your intention. And when you set your intention, I watched uh, your wife, um, Jake, Katie, like I watched you guys go for it. And I watched you go for it strong, and you're doing it today still and enjoying a lifestyle by design because you set that intention and your folder's up. Would you say that was a true statement? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. All right, yeah. so we're going to take a, a quick break real quick, um, cut, cut the file, and then I'm going to come back, and I want to talk about Katie and, and Lily and, and Jake Lilia. and the sure. family. Yeah, I want to talk family. about that. I could talk about that for right. hours. We could talk. we got 28 years of stuff to talk about. All right. All right, Brad.
So we were talking about Lilia mm -hmm. and Jake and Katie. And, uh, and I want to start this by saying um, I especially hope that this podcast would essentially help other parents, parents with teens or even teens. And I will say publicly on camera that uh, as a father, hands down the Achievement Award for what I've watched you do in the 27 years, you should get first place. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, and, and I have to ask, what, what is that? How did you do that? What was the drive? How did you just maintain and, and work so hard and family? Give me some insight because everybody out there is trying to figure it out and you've done it. Uh, I don't know. I, I know that uh, um, I think that I grew up early and and did what unfortunately many people are not able to do in this world and I cut the umbilical cord between myself and my parents and stood up mm -hmm. on my own two feet and declared my independence as a human being to take responsible for everything that happens to me and in doing I accepted my parents a hundred percent for everything that they did whether it was positive or negative didn't matter because I saw them in the light of that every decision they made they did with good intention whether it worked out that way or not and sometimes it didn't their intention was always pure and I, and uh, so I was able to take the positive things that I learned growing up and incorporate them into my life like loving your kids unconditionally no matter what um, like uh, honesty and integrity from my dad um, and then the things that weren't so good uh, I I changed and did it differently and my dad was an incredible man still alive lives down the street 90 years old yeah, love him to death I gotta see him at your and uh, he was in the Air Force when we grew up and and spent his time working a lot and going to night school a lot and in the Air Force he graduated from high school graduated from college and graduated with a master's degree so um, he wasn't around as much as I would have liked, I suppose. Right. And so I spent every minute I could with my kids and my family. So when when we were growing up, when the kids were growing up, Lily and I just loved them to death. We had such a good time. One of my mom's complaints was, hey, you never let me babysit your kids when they were growing up. I'm <laughs> like, what do you mean babysit? We never had a babysitter. We never wanted to go anyplace. We're going out to dinner. We're taking the kids. Yeah. And And... And, you know, I've probably been to, uh, I don't know, thousands of sports practices, thousands of sport games through Jake's roller hockey, soccer, lacrosse, Katie's soccer and volleyball. And I coached both of them for years. And, I mean, uh, it, was, it was get up, go to work, get done, get to the practice field or get to the game for 10 years. And, and I wouldn't have traded it for a second. I was just having fun with the family, with the kids, having fun. Because I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't fun. And those kids were a blast. Yeah. Traded it? No. Boxed it up and resold it? Yeah. <laughs> you need to figure out how to do that for people. Because uh, that's awesome. I, I look at your kids. I look at the relationship. Um, I watch what you guys do. Um, I admire you, obviously. I've, for a long time, I've followed your lead on a lot of things. And it's great to see it work out well. And like mm -hmm. you said, I think it's important for people to, to know also is that Christy made that same pledge with our kids. He says, just put as many people around them that love them as possible and things will work out. And it's the attention. Um, the new uh, the kids, they want to be seen, they want to be heard, and they want to be understood. And if you can give them that and that time, it is more helpful than I've seen most actions, right? And, and you were there for them. You obviously understood them and you gave them time and it's worked out well for you. And it's pleasant to see that in, in society today because you would think the world was coming un, undone uh, if you watch the daily news mm -hmm. or any of that. But in reality, there's 
there's a there's a still a lot of beauty happening and people doing the right thing and being there for your children is important. Now, obviously, if you can't be there, if something doesn't work out in a marriage or a relationship, I would I would hope that taking from from your story, from what I've seen of your story, is that regardless of whether they're together or separated as parents, show those kids time. I mm -hmm. will I will make that statement bold. Show up for your kids. Be there. Go to the game. Whether it's a, a you feel like it matters or it doesn't, it does. It does. It matters. It does. It matters. Show up. Yep. I had a parent at the game the other night. I heard in the background behind me say, "Well, I'm just I'm I'm showing up to support this child. Um, and I'm not sure why here, but I, I'm showing up to support so that they see me here." And I thought, how unauthentic. Mm. Like, something must be wrong. The fact that you wouldn't want to just be there. And we get so busy in our lives, and I'm guilty of it, which is probably why I can say it. Like I say is, although I did as much as I could, I could have done ten times more. And I am doing it now. Mm -hmm. Never never a time you can't change. And luckily, um, your family is all working together now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we let both the kids left and came back. Um, so we, you know, we have a, a family business, mm -hmm. and uh, and we make a product, we install the product, and and Katie runs Southern California, and Jake's in charge of our installations. Jake's leaving for um, uh, Italy tomorrow mm -hmm. to go take a crew of five people to do work on a Virgin Voyages cruise ship outside of Rome for five days, wow. and then they have I gave them two days paid vacation in Rome before they have to fly back, and it's like it's incredible. But uh, even, even so, they've been working together with us for six years now. Mm -hmm. And when we had our family meeting for the end of the year in December, a couple months ago, I, I was feeling like I needed to let them know that they could always leave. And so I, I sat them down and I said, hey, I want you to know that, that I'm glad that you're in it and, and I love that we're working together. And if something comes up that floats your boat, Jake, if you can become a rap artist and that works for you that's fantastic katie if something comes up for you and it's it's more compelling than this you can come to me and i'm going to say i support you 100 percent and they awesome. looked at me and said well that's great dad but why would we want to do anything else <laughs> this is a great opportunity yeah. we get to meet fantastic people we get to travel around the world you know we're, right. we're we can't make this kind of money someplace else i'd probably pay them too much Yes. But, uh, you, but you do, and I don't even know if you but, do, but I can but, guarantee you. Do. But I know who you a are. Good time. They're not leaving, so <laughs> it's it's great that that it's there's no pressure for them to be here. They want to be here, and right. that's what makes the whole thing special. And and that is a testament to how you raise them, and being there for them. Uh, so kudos to you, and yeah. I just can't say that enough. And well, again, hey, I I, and I Lilia, didn't raise obviously. these kids. Yeah, I didn't yeah. raise these Lilia. kids. Come on, <laughs> we know Lilia <laughs> yeah. is the love of my life. Of course, and she is an incredible mother. Yeah, and and she has uh, it's it's a it's a partnership and teamwork. Yeah, and for me, I couldn't have done it alone. She would probably say she couldn't have done it alone. True, but together we could do it, and 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 that's really the success that we had from from the day I first saw my wife till today my love for her has only grown right and that first day was big I saw her <laughs> I went to pick my sister up for work because her car had broken down and she was working at a at a uh, Merle Norman cosmetic store in the mall what's a Merle Norman Merle Norman it's a cosmetic <laughs> store, whatever. That's a that's what it was. And uh and I went to pick her up and it was an outdoor mall, so I was outside the store looking in and the door was locked because they had just closed. Yeah. And there was a gorgeous woman in a sweater dress counting out the till. And I said to myself, You know what? A lady like that that can wear a dress like that and count money, I'm in. <laughs> that was it. That was it. That's awesome. How old were you? Uh, let's see. I was 22, and she was 18. All right. We dated for a little while before we moved in together. And All we right. lived together for two years before we got married, so we, we knew what we were getting into. And that's, somehow it's managed to last. That's funny. We have similar paths in that. Meeting Christy a little earlier than that, a couple of years earlier, but being together for a few years before kids, we understood each other. And then with kids, when you go back and look at all the things that do succeed or don't succeed, 
um, you start to see patterns, which is really unique. And, I, and then I try and use those patterns to, uh, to help when I'm mentoring, right, is recognizing the patterns and then getting through them. Uh, I think that, I said it in the last episode, is, uh, sing, you know, s mentoring and a lot of the kids I come across, it's equal, equal. Families that are together, families that aren't together. Uh, single moms, single dads, however it is. I actually find that the kids get more attention in a single household than they do typically in a married household when there's an issue. That's a strange statistic that I've noticed. Mm. So typically if the kid's having, if there's a, a married couple and the kid's having issues, they're getting far less attention than if it's a single parent because they're getting a lot more attention because they're there with the parent independently. Kind of unique and, and those are a little easier to, to, to work on. So all of this time goes by, these last 27 years that we've known each other and the kids are, you guys are working together, dad's still down the street, family's together, and you live in Las Vegas. And this place is a unique, inspiring city as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And people ask me, how do I raise a daughter here? For anybody outside of the city that listens to this or sees this, what would you tell them about raising two kids in Las Vegas? Or what are some... Um, well, when I was a kid, my dad was in the Air Force, and we moved around a lot. Right. So I moved a lot. I, I was in a lot of different places, and I know... Here, the thing about the people say, raising kids in Las Vegas, two things. One, the schools here are some of the worst in the nation, and they have been the entire time we've lived here. Yeah, like 40, 47 it's, to 50. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's right. not because of the money per student we spend. It's just Las Vegas doesn't know how to educate kids. Yeah. Part of it is the transient society. Uh, part of it is uh, a, a lot of uh, non-English speaking people that are in the school as well. But for whatever reason, it's a, it's, uh, our results are terrible. And there's so many opportunities to get in trouble. Right. To, 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 uh, I mean, Las Vegas welcomes vices. You know, if, if you like oh, yeah. to smoke, gamble, drink, whatever, come to Vegas, we're, we're your place. Right. So in that atmosphere to raise great kids, um, we did it just by what we talked about earlier. We were involved. We, we read to our kids at night when they could read, they had to read. When it was time to do homework, we, we knew their teachers. We knew the mm -hmm. homework was coming in. We, we sat down and had homework time. If, the, if there was no homework, we found some homework for them to do. And, uh, and we just spent a lot of time with them. Um, and uh, hey, it all worked out. And, and I think right. that the, um, the ability for a parent to be involved with their kid's life is trumps anything of the outside environment of trouble that you could get into or schools that are underperforming. Um, there are good teachers out there. They do want their kids to do well. And if a parent is involved with their kid, the teacher's more involved with the kid as well. Right. And, and, and they know. Uh, so for whatever reason, um, also there's a little bit of luck because I know some really wonderful people, yeah. wonderful people that have, that have had kids and it didn't work out. And for one reason or another, uh, uh, peer pressure or trying to fit in, or, or some other event that happens that makes it difficult for a kid to, to grow up or take responsibility. And, and um, you know, it, things mm -hmm. like that happen. And I realize that. And that's why I consider myself lucky. lucky. <laughs> I'm a very fortunate man. I mean, I, we did the best we could, yeah. and it worked out well. And I just know people that have did the best they could, and it didn't work out well through no fault of their own. So True. from that point of view, I, I, uh, we do feel very, very fortunate. Right. Uh, so, so I think you win with the engagement. I think we probably drove that point home many times is spend the time with your kids. None of it, just period, hands and down. And enjoy it. And enjoy, enjoy it. it. I enjoy no matter it. What. Every story, every practice, every game, I, wouldn't, I, I, I loved every one of them. I, I, cold, wind, rain, ice on the sidelines. Yeah. I didn't care. I'm, I'm gonna, there, and uh, I loved it. And, and listening to your kids, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take a quick break again. I'm, when I come back, I want to tell you a quick story about uh, when I first heard my child speak, like speak to me. 
which uh-huh. is kind of unique. So I'm going to tell you that. Brian, let's take a break real quick. All right, we're back. So uh, you and I could talk to nauseam about our children and how, amazing, how amazingly lucky we are. Mm-hmm. So we won't. We'll stop at that. But let's just admit, though, I don't think we brought that up. You are an incredibly fortunate man as well. <laughs> yes, yes. There's yes. a lot of luck. In business also, luck and timing play an enormous role in business mm-hmm. as well, which I've noticed. So uh, to, to kind of close out that section and – there's a lot of talk of mental mental health these days, and especially since COVID, it's changed. There's some there's an undertone going on. People are um, I don't know if I say uncomfortable or unsure. There's just something different happening in in the world that I run in, and I'm noticing it. And a lot of it's leading to mental health, and and people are doing more mental health awareness things. You can see a lot of people starting to create things to help with that. And I, I start that by saying that because before I'm wearing my, my Lake Mead Mojave Adventure. So I have a day job as well as my stuff on the side. And I work for an amazing company that allows me to do both because they believe in what this is. So extremely fortunate there. And so before I worked for them, and I'll make that very clear because they have policies, is I, my kids were young and I was working, um, I was working a lot. I was I'm very ambitious which you know, uh, and I was so dedicated to achieving the goals that, I, that I, I couldn't stop or focus on anything but that goal or achieve that goal. And I took the kids down to the lake, to Cottonwood Cove, which is one of my favorite places in the world, and I took the kids down there. They're on the beach, and they're hanging out. I do not partake in weed. I never really smoked weed, maybe a little bit through high school or something, but it was, it's not something I ever took a liking to. And... We had on the beach, we were playing with the kids. The youngest one, I think, was four, just started talking. Uh, and one of my friends said, hey, uh, have a little of this. I'm like, oh, I'm at the lake, okay, let's do that. So I smoked a little bit. A couple minutes later, I moseyed down to the beach. I laid down on the sand next to my second born and I started playing. And she started having a conversation with me. I said something. She returned with words and sentences. For the first time. Yeah. For the first time. Until I got up and ran over to my wife and I said, oh my gosh, she's talking. Full sentences. You, she said this and that. And my wife looks at me and she goes, yeah, she's been doing that for a couple months. She just didn't notice. <sighs> like... So I say that because obviously a fault of mine, but when I look at mental health and how people's brains work and and some of the kids that I deal with today, some can't turn it off without some help of some sort. So whether that's medication, whether that's meditation, whether that's a little bit of weed or marijuana, whatever we call it these days, I, I truly believe that there are, There are things that have to happen. You have to find a way to cope that's healthy for you. And and I negative coped with drugs. Like I coped with drugs and it was like, it was to cover up things, not to help me enhance things or meditation. So when I found meditation, uh, my type of meditation that I wanted or that spoke to me, it actually gave me that same feeling of calmness. And that's when I found out that you could do it without drugs. And, and I say that because um, I think a lot of, uh, I, I don't think, I don't know, people run through life so fast. And there's a country song that says, I believe it says, like, I'm going to die. How's it go, Brittany? Hurry up and die. Like, you're in a hurry. You can't get nowhere. I'm in a hurry. You can't get nowhere. <laughs> yes. That was my life. 
and now I want it to not do that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think I try and tell those stories as well because until we start actually talking about our experiences and admitting that we may have done something wrong or didn't do it perfectly, you know, didn't do it in the way that maybe we could have, until we start saying those things, other people continue to do those things without recognizing it potentially. And I'm hoping that that's kind of what these, these sessions help is, can we actually talk about what it was like or how it worked or, or what we did or how we overcame it? Mm -hmm. Because my children didn't get as much of my time as I would have liked to. They got a lot more than, than I probably ever got. Mm -hmm. For sure. I did the same thing as you. I felt like I got a lot less time as a kid. So I put double and triple into my children. In hindsight, I could have put even more and would not have regretted it at this age. Well, you'd never regret it. Yeah. But but I wouldn't beat yourself up over yeah. it, Chad. No. I mean, you, did, you did a great job. Christy yeah. did a wonderful yeah. job. And your kids are great. Well, so you did something right. Well, yeah. So let's, let's not uh, <laughs> feel any negative thoughts about your yeah. fatherhood. You should take that as a big win, not as... I could have done better. And I could have done better is a tough thing that you and I both do. Yeah. Uh, no matter how perfect I do something, when I get done, I'm the most critical about things that I do. Uh, uh, but you have, yeah. to, you have to get past that, especially when it's done and say, okay, I did the best I could and let it go. Right. You still have a big uh, effect on your, on your kids and right. you're your goal to spend more time with them that's not that'll never be done you'll always want to spend time with them and you always will and you realized it but whatever choices you made younger in life about being at the office and not being with your kids yeah even though you might you just can't beat yourself you can't be you can't regret it right. it is what it is and and it's the now when what you're doing now and how you interact with your kids now that has the the most important so what you're telling me is take the win buddy the take the win the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the second best time is now is now 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 there, is the only time there, there's nothing new under the sun i think i named one of the episodes that and everything's i feel like it's just a circle and an evolution which is i'm i'm a extremely nervous about tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, I don't know if you watched, tomorrow a dream comes true for me. I actually got to go speak in front of a group at a high school. Right, right. And do you know what my regret is already before it's even started? I'm nervous and I'm already like questioning myself. Um, it's all I ever wanted to do. And I'm saying, I'm too old. It took me too long to get there. I can't, no, how, I do I even, how do I even connect with a high school student? And then I went, well, I have a daughter, she's 14. I think I know how to connect with her. Yeah, I'm, I'm already questioning, can I connect? Is there something beneficial? Can I help still? Because 12 years ago, 13 years ago, when you watched me start this, that's when I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. It took me till now to actually get it done, and it's happening. So I have, I'm going to try to come. Maybe I'll have a counseling session with you and try and figure out how to <laughs> overcome that. You've always had sound advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we're mentoring. You're a mentor of mine. Uh, one of my uh, s longest supporters, and we're moving forward in this, and we're getting even, even when we didn't talk. Sometimes there'd be a year we didn't talk. Yeah, not very often, but but um, you know, being being an entrepreneur can sometimes be a lonely life, and and there's so many things on your plate, mm -hmm. and so many things on my plate, and so many people relying on what you do today and the decisions you make mm -hmm. that affect their lives, especially your employees and your customers and your suppliers, that, that I know I, I get focused in on that and doing what I gotta do. And that's where the, the uh, important reaching out went by the wayside and why there was times when we didn't talk because we were all, we were doing our own thing. Right. But I think you know, that even if we didn't talk, I, well, I would always have your back. I know. And I was, I was supporting you even if we weren't talking. And I knew that you were out there doing your best for your business and your family yeah. every single day. And, and if I found out any otherwise, <laughs> I would have called you. 
<laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> That's for sure. It, uh, the support, you know, I have, you know, the, the support system is what helps. So when I look at what's been beneficial in my life, and I look and say, how did you get through half of what you've gone through? And the first thing I think of are the people who helped me get through it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't me who got through it. It was those standing beside me, around me, running into me, and the support. And it's so easy today for people to um, be negative. I, I don't think negative is the right word, but uh, non-supportive. It's a competition. If you watch some of my feeds on social right now, the way the algorithm works on TikTok, like I spend a lot of time trying to, to learn from there, listen to philosophers, but it's all about work hard, go faster, outwork the next guy. It's a competition. Be a be a tiger. Be a lion. Are you a killer? Mm -hmm. Are are you gonna take over the world? Are you gonna cry about it? And I mean, just on and I'm on. I'm getting on. worn out with just you talking about well, that. Right. And and so I'm wondering, is this younger generation? Is that what they're watching? Are are, are they seeing what I'm seeing? Is is it different? Or or is everybody seeing that if you don't work yourself to death, you won't be successful? Because at my age, at 44. I'm seeing that and I'll take off the headphones and I'll take my wife and I'll say, take me out of this. I can't even be in here anymore. And I'm truly afraid that that's what they're, what everybody's being fed is work so hard that you forget to live your life because that's mm. the only way you're going to be successful. So I'm hoping to open up some conversations around that as well too, because there is a balance. Yeah. Yeah. I think the work hard message has been around for a long time. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, I mean in the, in the, uh, 70s and 80s and the 90s uh, I've seen I've seen that message out there a lot mm -hmm. and I lived that message and and I did work and and thought that that was the way to success but now I have a maybe a little more enlightened idea that uh, I want to spend more time creating in my mind what I want and spend more time creating and less time doing because I don't have to figure it all out. In fact, usually if I let my mind decide, okay, this is what I want and this is how it's going to happen, I can figure it right down to the gnat's ass. Right. But that's not actually how it might happen. The main thing is that I create what I want and let it go and vibrate at that vibration and let that come to me as like things attract like things right. and do more creating and less doing. That's what I'm all about these days. And I see it and it's working for you. They say manifest destiny, think it, create it. I say the number one habit of a successful person, whether it's, I guess, life or business is you write down your goals and objectives. You know, there's, there's nothing new that I can tell you. Everything that I can say to you as a mentor to anybody is something I learned from somebody Absolutely. else. Absolutely. I think that's been the most relieving portion of my life is going, wait, I don't have to figure this out. I can take the positive that somebody's had a, a good turnout and use that to help somebody else. Half of the social media and online classes and courses and stuff that I watch these days is a regurgitation of somebody else's content. It all is. It's crazy. It all is. But that doesn't mean that it's not valuable. Uh, for and sure it's, it's not, valuable. Uh, some of these truths are, are truths that always will always be truths. And the, there's always somebody that needs to hear it. And who they hear it from, at what time they hear and what it, they, how they feel about the person that's that's giving right. them that information. Always lines up and is delivered as it should be at the time it should be. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And so the more, okay, that's actually a really good point. So Let's yeah, talk. And when you go <laughs> give this talk tomorrow, right? You don't have to be a hundred percent original. Yeah. You have to be a hundred percent authentic right. in delivering the message that you want to deliver, and don't worry about that it's already been said partly because that doesn't matter and partly because these kids haven't heard it before so they need you to come in there and tell them yeah that's right it it feels it feels good to enlighten others to information or knowledge which 
they didn't have before, right? When, you t when, when somebody asks something or they ask a question and you give a response, whether it's your opinion or your experience, which I find our experiences are, are the best because they're authentic. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you what I've learned or what I saw somebody do, but it doesn't mean as much as this is what I experienced, so I can be cautious of that. Is it feels... Um, fake to me when I repeat other things, um, like a guilt, like I said, uh, so funny how many times I feel guilty about stuff. I say that over and over again, because I, I, the judgment of myself is you want to be original, but the purpose when I built mentor was that more people would do it. More people like you who were inherently doing it anyways would rub off on more people and more people and more people because th that was the goal of it. And how you verbalize that to a younger generation is a challenge. How do you make a cool clothing brand out of something that they don't quite understand how important it is yet? I mm -hmm. think that's what I'm afraid of, is, is I, want it, I want it to be helpful for, for them now, but it may take a lot of time before they realize it is. Mm. That's the challenge so I'm nervous I'm scared of it I'm not scared of it for us I'm scared of failing at what I set out to, to succeed at um, but these conversations help I'm rambling now well you know the I, I, I was given a set of cassette tapes many many years ago and I used to listen to this guy Jim Rohn a motivational speaker really incredible guy in fact uh, Tony Robbins went to work for Jim in the, when he was a teenager Right. and then split off and when i listen to tony robbins i still hear jim Rohn quotes in what he says right um but um uh um and and i still repeat things that i heard from jim Rohn when i listened to it in my car in 1984 and 85 right. of some of the great quotes that he had and uh yeah i still use them today i don't mind but one of the things that he said was, as he welcomed everybody into one of his sessions was, maybe you're ready for this information today, maybe you're not. I cannot positively affect everybody at the school today. I'm not even gonna try. Hopefully, a lot of you will get this. But right. I can tell you, for me to be successful here today, I'm gonna be feeling successful about this talk if one of you, maybe right. you, maybe you, maybe you, but if one of you are ready for this message yeah. and it hits home and it changes your life in a small way in a positive direction, I will consider myself a success. Yeah, you're gonna have to teach me that. One out of 200 is mathematically hard for me, but you're right, and I know you're right. You made a positive <laughs> effect. <laughs> I know. You used your time wisely. And there'll be more than one. I know. I but know. that way you're, 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 you're beating the average. <laughs> you're more successful than you needed to be. Right. Uh, but all 200 of them are not going to run out of the stands and hug you. No, Don't expect that. No, no. Some listen. of them are going to think you're crazy. And that's okay, too. High school students, I remember high school, I was the most judgmental kid in the world. Like, I walk, it's like walking into the lion's den middle-aged balding man walking into the high school saying hey I got some information that may be helpful for you yeah, I'm shaking in my boots <laughs> but it should be fun yeah you'll have a great time it should be fun so if I have I'll give you a, a call tomorrow evening all right so more of these opportunities come up to these schools to go in and, and speak they have a they have a, a whole um, you know for people that will show up and, and actually do these things there's people needed through our Clark County School District. As you, you mean said, Clark County has, are, are looking for people to give presentations like they're that? They're looking for mentors. They're looking oh. for people to give presentations. Oh. Yeah. So part of my um, mission is to, since I raised my kids in the public school system here, and they did, they did well. They uh -huh. delivered a certain, you know, my kids did all right. And there's, like you said, there's amazing teachers out there. Most yeah. probably undervalued profession in this town for sure for what they go through yeah i might know some people that would like to do that yeah so i have a great friend named jesse farrell and he just uh, finished his second book his first book was how you leave them feeling and the second book is how you leave them feeling for relationships right but uh but i mean the he he's he puts on a good a great presentation and the book and the idea that 
that you want to leave people feeling great. That if you leave them feeling great, they'll remember you, yeah. they'll respect you, they'll want to do business with you, they'll, the, as long as you're, they're feeling good about your interactions with them, yeah. they'll come back for more. P people won't remember what you said, they'll remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. I remember that, a teaching as well. People don't care what you know till they know how much you care. Oh, another good one. We're going oh, to have to have a lesson and turn your phones off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is going way back. So, is there, number one, we're coming close to the end here, but we're going to do this multiple times. This was, uh, I needed to have you on. You were the first, uh, first person who's been in my life for this amount of time that I consider a mentor of mine, someone that I would tattoo it right on your body if I could for you <laughs> just how powerful you were and beneficial in my life like I want the world to know that and uh, is there anything that you would like to say on the mentor channel for posterity 10 15 years from now if this ever gets watched and used hmm. what would you tell that next generation about mentoring or or what it's meant to you um, well the human interaction is what brings meaning to life and the uh, ability to affect people in a positive way is, is such a joy you know it's uh, it's like um, the only thing that has value in this life are the things that you can give away and they multiply like my respect I give you my respect I give you my love mm -hmm. I try to bring joy into your life these things are valuable and as you give them away they increase in the universe and they increase in your own personal life and those are the things that I focus on and bring me my joy and happiness and success. You can't have what you're not first willing to give away. Yeah, yeah. Everybody that works for me knows right off the bat, just like I told my kids in December, um, that if you ever come to me and say, hey, I think I have a better opportunity, I'm going to say, how can I help you? And actually, this just happened with us. I had a personal assistant two years ago, and she worked for us for a year. Man, I doubled and tripled what I could do, get yeah. done in a day. Yeah. It was amazing. It's because you didn't have to do anything. They did everything. And I then, then we needed a salesperson <laughs> for Las Vegas, and Kayla was like, you know, I've been listening to the sales pitch for a year, Frank. I think I can do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. And there's more responsibility involved, and there's more money involved. And if you want to give it a try, we'll give it a try. So she did. She did great. And two months ago, she came and said, Frank, I applied for another job. And I didn't think I was going to get it. And I couldn't even have thought about applying for this job if I hadn't worked for you. But I've grown so much that I applied for another job. It's a huge amount of money. And they accepted me. And I'm giving you my two weeks notice. And I was like, Kayla, I'm only happy for you. Right. This is fantastic. Right. And, uh, and so I, I, she's going through training still. So I'm calling her, supporting her. And yeah. I just, you know, I, I hope she does fantastic. Yeah. And That's anybody awesome. that works for me, I'm happy. I'm happy to be a step up. You, you are one of the most supportive people I've ever met in my entire life. And hmm. you're always there. Well, thank you. You are that guy. I am that guy. <laughs> you are that guy. <laughs> All right. That's Human Connection, Episode 8. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. We're going to do that more. You can cut it down, Brad. <laughs>